Hi there, I'm Rob McDonald, and I want to talk to you a little bit about today about what digital art is. Um, so for those of you that maybe used to be into art at some point in time, uh, or just looking maybe to get into it, uh, digital art is a great way to get into art uh, without the mess. So without the oils and the canvases and the brushes, uh, digital art allows you to do those exact very same things digitally. So you get to do it in your computer without actually uh, you know, working with all of the mess that's associated with the, the natural media. So what I want to do today is actually talk to you a little bit about uh, Corel Painter Essentials 4. It is an easy to use home art studio uh, that gives you paints and brushes and uh, ways to paint photos um, directly within your computer. So let's go in and have a look at what it actually does. Right now you're looking at the welcome screen and there's two different areas where you can actually work uh, within Corel Painter Essentials. First way is drawing and painting. So what that's going to do is allow you to start from scratch. Blank canvas with brush with paint, painting. Start photo painting will enable you to take a photograph and bring it in and either hand paint the photograph or have Corel Painter Essentials 4 paint it for you, which is Truly, truly unique <laughs> and a pretty cool process if I don't uh, mind saying so myself. There's a couple of other things here in the, uh, in the, uh, in the welcome screen as well. Uh, there's some tutorials built in. There's a guidebook there as well. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, uh, with the photo painting. So let's click on photo painting. We're going to open up an image. So let's open up this one here. Let's open up mom and little one. And away you go. So with a couple of clicks here, we're going to go in and actually paint this photograph. So as I mentioned earlier, you're actually able to paint by hand. I will show you that in a second, but first what I want to show you is how you can actually have the program paint itself. So uh, we have an image here. We're going to select a setting. So let's do a custom setting this time, and we're going to select our own brush. So we have a brush drawer here, and if, by looking at the brush drawer, you can actually see what the brushes are, what they're called. So if you're not familiar with what a camel hair brush is, it'll tell you that's a camel hair, and then what the brush stroke actually looks like. So we're going to select uh, maybe a tapered camel here, and we're going to maybe mess around with the colors a bit. We'll intensify the colors, and then what we'll do is we'll click Start. By doing this, it will actually go through, and as you're watching on screen right now, it's actually painting the picture for you. So again, it takes all of that work out of, out of painting photographs. So it's a great way if you want to have the program paint it all for you and just work with that, you can do that. Or if you want it to start and then maybe go in and touch it up uh, a little more by hand, you can also do that. So I'm going to let that run for a couple of seconds. Um, there's a couple of things that are built into the program too that I think you'll be kind of impressed with. Actually, I know you'll be impressed with it because uh, the program will actually start with a fairly broad brush and then reduce the brush size to bring out the detail um, as you're seeing the detail starting to come through the image right now. Um, once this is all done, and it's pretty close to being done now, you can go back and touch it up. I'm going to stop it, and what we're going to do is we're going to touch up the image a little bit. So there's a little brush down bottom here called Soft Edge Cloning Brush, and what this does is it brings out the detail that you know, we might have lost a little bit through painting. And it's not that we lost the detail, it's just that we want to really add focus to the central areas of the image here. So we want to bring back Lauren's face here because she's so cute, and Mum's face here as well. She's also pretty cute, I think. All right, so that's one way. So we let the program paint it uh, uh, for us. So let's, uh, let's remove everything. Let's, let's do a select all, and we'll delete everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to use maybe a different, well, actually, you know what? We can use the same brush. We'll go back and grab a tapered camel. And I'm going to turn on a little setting here called tracing paper. What this does is it gives us a visual reference um, as to where we're painting. So what it enables us to do, you know, we can go in and adjust the brush size here, but we can go in and we can start painting with this brush. And because the tracing paper is actually on, we can actually see where uh, we are painting. Now, typically you're going to start with a broader brush to fill the canvas. And let me just make the brush stroke a little bigger here so we can get some of the background uh, painted in. Uh, you're going to start with a broad brush stroke to fill the canvas and then reduce the brush size to bring up the detail. And that's essentially the same thing that the auto setting did, but now we're just doing it by hand. If I turn the tracing paper off, you can actually see the image and the detail of the image coming through in the background there. Oops, I did a little zoom there by mistake. So anyway, you can see that actually going. So if I want to bring out some detail, in a little Lauren's face here, I would actually reduce the brush size just as the auto painting did and bring back some of that detail. So again, you'd make the brush size a little smaller to again bring out more and more and more detail. And if we wanted, we have a zoom tool here as well where we can zoom in on that area. And again, with that brush, we can come back and start bringing back that detail. And just as I did with the soft edge cloning brush, I can come back and again bring back that detail uh, straight on and then leave the outside of the image to look 
more painted. All right, so that's, that's the photo painting side of, of Painter Essentials. Let's go in and have a quick look at the drawing and painting. So if you have any artistic ability at all, uh, this is certainly right up your alley. So what we're going to do is we're going to select File, New, and we're going to open up a new canvas. So we have a blank canvas here. And there's a couple of very, very, very unique things uh, that Painter Essentials actually has. So just looking at the interface itself, if you look at the color palettes here, you'll notice that we have a variety of different colors. So if I want to select red, I can do that quite easily. Or if I want to mix the colors, which is traditionally the way artists would actually uh, make color, uh, you have that ability as well. So if I just deleted all of what was currently there and added some more color, so if I added some yellow and I added some green, you can see that as I make brush strokes uh, with the green, I'm actually mixing the color to get very different colors. And again, that's a very, very, very unique, uh, unique experience. So let's go in and have a look at the brush drawer. Let's grab a different brush. So let's grab um, our thin paint selection, uh, the Real Fan Soft. Uh, what this brush enables us to do is that when we make a brush stroke, so let's go ahead and select a color you can actually see and count the bristles on the brush itself. So again, um, you're getting a very unique and very natural painting experience. When you get into the sample multiple colors, the mixer palette here, if I select uh, in an area where there's a couple of colors, now when I make a brush stroke, you actually get a blend of the color. So again, a very, very, very natural and again, very unique uh, painting experience. We also leverage some technology from uh, Wacom, which enables us to leverage pressure sensitivity. So when we go into our dry media, for example, and we grab maybe a soft charcoal, for example, when we make a brush stroke, actually, let's not use a soft charcoal. Let's go in and use a square chalk. When you make a brush stroke, you can actually see the grain of the, the paper texture. Because you're working on a canvas, a canvas naturally has some texture. So that texture is actually coming through when you're painting. There's a little uh, section down bottom here at the bottom of your, of your toolbox where you can choose different paper textures. So right now we're on basic. Let's say, for example, we went to dots because that, that's pretty obvious. Um, you'll notice now there's a dot pattern coming through on that, on that canvas. You can also mix textures within uh, the image itself as well. So if we want to use a sandy this time around, again, that's a slightly different texture than the other two that were currently there. If I want to change the size of the brush to make a much bigger brush stroke, then I can choose the brush size just by adjusting the slider back and forth. And now I have a bigger brush versus if I reduce that slider, I then have a smaller brush. There's also some very unique effects brushes as well. So if you're into scrapbooking and you like to do special frames around your images, there are variable image size hoses here. So if we want to select a variable size hose, for example, from the drop-down list at the top of the uh, window or at the top of the application here, we can actually choose different uh, images. So let's say, for example, we wanted to do a winter theme or whatever. If you wanted to do, you know, some different snowflakes, you can brush those across the screen. Now, the other th neat thing is that you can do, you know, that one was variable size. If we do variable angle, and select the same thing, you get a slightly different look than if you do variable size. So if I wanted to add a border of snowflakes around the outside of my canvas here, I can use the straight line stroke where what that will do is it'll enable me to paint in straight lines. So then I can just put the border around the outside of the image quite easily. So there you have it. You have a, a border around the outside of your, your image. Now we can do both the photo painting and the drawing and painting at the same time. So if I wanted to paint a photo and then put this border around the outside of it, I can very easily do that as well. After you're done and you've completed your masterpiece, there's also the ability to do an online print. So you can then up, upload your, uh, your masterpiece online and then have that printed on a t-shirt or a hat or a canvas and then have that canvas wrapped around a frame or in a frame. Uh, there are a number of different output options that you can do with that. So again, a very, very, very unique and very natural experience. All right, so that's Corel Painter Essentials 4. It's the easy to use home art studio, and it's the best way to get into digital art without the mess.